welcome back bone ponies to the next episode of Simbaru. previously your party got offered a job with the pta the pendleton tendleton adventuring division they were soon after accepting the mission met with a group of uh, 30 or so adventurers that they will have to lead into Davakar. The leader of this group is Tenton Vendrick, a high member of the Church of Prios. In discussing the treasure the group will get, he presented the party with an artifact known as the Water of Dusk. And 50 Thala. Now, with the party being fully on board with the mission, the group gathers their supplies and adventures out the northern gate of Thistlehold into the vast forest known as Davaka. And we're here with the same players uh, Cody, Steve, and Robert. And. Your boy Neil here as the overlord. Um so yeah, as we left you guys last, you were discussing who was getting the artifact, and I'm guessing that was going to Steve, correct? Yep. So Steve, did you want to try and uh well we'll have to wait. It'll take a little bit of time to attune to it. So yeah, it won't be right good. off the bat. It'll probably be something you have to do when we uh go to camp at mm -hmm. night because it takes a little bit of time. You got to okay. get acquainted. You got to tell it a story. It tells you a story. Yeah. You got to yeah. start yeah. vibing. And, and, you know, it gives it your power. Um, So with that being stated, you guys now, in an essence, the way we're going to run this, because there is 30 people you guys are kind of supervising, we'll say, right? You're leading yeah. this this expedition. Um, so when it goes into aspects of combat, you have nine full-fledged fighters, all right, four of those being Templars. The other ones are just either Barbarians or Ombrian cell swords that have uh, kind of been hired. You have four specified people who are kind of like your hunters, right? Um, so they're going to be more archer, long range type of thing. You have um, five people who are priests or of the priesthood, um, including the leader of the group, Tenton Vendrick. And then you have four scouts who uh, are also hired on. They're, you know, kind of your... Uh, uh, they are also good wilderness guides in a, in a way. Um, so they'll be able to kind of spot some stuff out for you early. Um, if and when we get into combat, we'll kind of have to discuss, all right, how, or do you want to just do the three of you guys? Are you going to have a couple of them with you? How many are you leaving behind to protect the caravan? Things of that nature. Um, mm -hmm. You'll discuss that, and that'll either, you know... If it's just the three of you, it may be a harder encounter, but you're going to have less losses. If it's more of you guys, it's going to make for an easier encounter for you, but there's a chance you will lose people in the battle. Alrighty. Um, in the groups, they will also have some people who are trained in, like, Medicus. Um, a lot of the workers, there's eight of them. You know, just regular workers, somebody of like a trade level that they're keeping track of all the mules. They're moving everything together. Some of them are cooks. Some of them are carpenters and crafters. Once they get into the outpost, that's going to be the use of them. Um, so there'll be a little bit of benefit from resting. There'll be medicus. There'll be a little bit of healers plus the thirty men. There's going to be there's going to be other skilled things. Um, for you guys resource wise at rests so make sure you ask or double check if there's something you specifically want to do as we travel through davakar the further you get 
into the forest. You can kind of see it on the map. There's a very light section, you know, right in here. It starts to get a little bit darker, and then it starts to get very dark. These are the different layers of Davakar. As you are traveling through Davakar, the forest gets denser. There's more of a rigorous terrain, more powerful creatures, more likely to get into bigger encounters the further you get in. Mm -hmm. um, so keep that in mind. There is going to be certain almost like survival tests throughout the whole journey that you guys would be used to. Um, so on each day of travel, I will ask certain people, whatever you're in charge of, to roll checks. And depending on how you guys divvy up certain things, or if you just want it to be specifically, oh, we're going to send out the four scouts today, all four of them are going to go forward, and they'll alert us if anything comes out, none of our group's going with them type of thing. You get what I'm saying? Um, but if you guys are good and you want to travel with the scouts, then it'll rely off of your tests, not the scouts tests. If you kind of get catch my drift. Alrighty. Sure. Um, so okay. this is, this is the, the first traveling day. Um, is there specifically anything each of you want to do? Um, Think of this as any any aspect of what you could see in adventuring. You know, people paying attention. You know, doing your vigilant tests to make sure anything everything's all right. If anybody wants to go out hunting as the party goes forward or scouting, you know, those those are all things you could be keeping a map of where you're going or being the cartographer to make sure you're staying on the true path forward. Because um, again. In this aspect, you may have actual trails because it's so in the beginning of Davakar. This is very much barbarian territory. There's still active groups that, list, that live through here, active trade routes that kind of go through. Um, but we'll just kind of go around and start with. So let's start with you, Robert. What is your character? Um, or you guys can openly discuss what's going to be best for you guys. Sure. So uh, my character, since, you know, mostly he's a merchant and he's just on the lookout to make deals. Um, he doesn't really have any, like, crafting skills himself. Um, uh, but he's really good at organizing, like, groups. Like, that's mm -hmm. one of his skills. So, I mean, uh, anytime we're making camp or anything like that, I think he he could definitely be useful in like setting people to tasks okay so you're gonna kind of navigate the the group kind of keep the group together as efficient as possible and stuff along those times that might be that might buy you guys you might be able to travel quicker than at that point right that's like that's all that's like part of his thing is like he's like a facilitator and a planner and since he knows the forest of davakar really well he would be really good at like essentially being a guide and being like we stop here don't stop there um you yep. know all righty um what what ability that you have do you think is going to be the the one what do you what do you think is going to do that for you leader the leader and and what does that uh what does that ability allow you to do it so between leader and tactician i think that those two will help me okay um, so tactician is my ability to like use like the knowledge that i've acquired and mm. read about to be strategic in like larger battle plans um or just any kind just of just a movement. thirty group, you know, you know, have thirty people that you have to navigate through the forest. Right, logistics That's, all. Lessons. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that and that uses does that use persuasion as an attribute? Uh, it uses uh, my cunning um, okay. as an attribute, but leader uses my persuasive, um, and uh, also allows me to use it in place of all my all resolute checks. Gotcha. Um, but I can also use it to like organize a group. So essentially for 
like in for battle purposes, I can also use it to like target specific enemies. And if anybody in the group attacks them, they get bonuses to their damage rolls. Gotcha. So, well, let's go, let's go with that aspect. You're kind of doing the logistics of the group. So what I'll need, um, right now, it's going to be everybody's morale is really good. Um, there hasn't been a lot of losses. I think it's just going to be a flat roll. So if you want to give me one of those for the day, um, to see how well you can keep everybody together, that'd be good. Uh, 12 and it would be a 15. So. So you succeed. Yep. You, you keep, you, you do a good job. Um, feeling all the newbies out. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Everybody's very well receptive <laughs> of taking, of taking, of you taking lead, even though these, you know, there's, uh, it's actually a mixed group of, uh, Ambrians and barbarians. There is some barbarian tribesmen in with this group. Um, just so you know, um, <laughs> Steve, what is your character kind of going to be doing? Um, he would probably be doing whatever he can do to help. Um, he knows that his uh, out here in the field, his uh, his mind is not as as useful as his body. So he would probably be like carrying things, but also sort of keeping an eye out. So he's he'll be carrying stuff, but he won't be carrying enough to like hold him back in case any sort of danger presents itself. So he, he'll probably well, they have and so a lot of anything supply wise is either it's on pack mules or some type right. of pack animal right now. Okay. Um, so what a lot of these people are doing is either leading the pack animals, um, putting up a a, a vigilant t like so a lot of the fighters through uh, Robert's character are gonna mm. kind of be stationed around to be able to keep a good perimeter on these if you wanted to help them it would probably be like a keeping a vigilant keeping an eye out okay um yeah i was gonna say cunning but they're, they're the same uh so my vigilant is a 10 and that'll so... be it'll be a flat roll you're used to this area you know you're right outside it's the travel outside of this hold into davakar well it's a good thing that there's a bunch of people doing this because i rolled a 17 so <laughs> you get lost in thought um, you're having you're having all of these old flashbacks because as an ogre, occasionally, you're you're. Uh, we kind of mentioned it last time. Um, you don't really know how you became. You just started having memories, and a lot of the time, the first time an ogre comes, you know, comes to recollection, they they they've just been wandering, and they don't know why they've been wandering. And you have this recall of one of the times you were wandering in the in the woods of Davakar, and uh, you kind of you saw some elves performing a hunting ritual on one of the boars that they just took down, and you think, oh yeah, that's right, we can end up seeing elves out here. That'll be interesting, <laughs> you know, type of type of mindset. Not so much focused on the work at hand. Yeah. And Gar might warn some people about the fact that there might be elves here. Yeah, you'd, you'd be telling stories maybe to one of the people next to you who's controlling one of the pack mules yeah. about elves and other folk and things of Davakar. Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like sometimes it's scaring them, like, oh, my God, did I sign up yeah. for this right? And then other times it's like, oh, that is really cool and interesting. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and Cody, what is it that, uh, you would be kind of doing? That. I'm going to be using, um, my alchemy ability to look for herbs to make a chemical concoction. Grenades! <laughs> righty, right, give me, uh, what, what role do you got to do for that again? Sorry, I was writing something. Uh, cunning. Alrighty. So if you want to give me that, it's going to be, again, this is a pretty easy area. You know kind of where so, everything hides. It's going to be a flat roll. Okay. I got a 5 out of 14, so that's successful. Alrighty, you're gonna find about three uh, healing herbs. Um, 
throughout this uh this looking and one uh one plant to be able to make a an antidote out of for poison okay so elixirs or three is that a different thing a healing herb you you found healing herbs Yeah, because you're gonna find you're gonna find um, okay things that'll help you in crafting certain other things. Okay, so that's what you're gonna be doing on your journey. So of course that that point and in that's time, pretty much it for me. Yep, 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 yep. Um, are you guys commanding the scouts to do anything? Are you are you gonna send them up ahead, or are you just gonna keep them with the group doing a vigilant test? I think I'd be pretty strategic with where the scouts are. Depend, uh, vi you know, as we progress through Davakar, mm -hmm. um, because my goblin would have a pretty good idea about you know where we are, particularly the lighter green area. As we get into the darker green area, I think that's when. Um, like there'll be more strategic more strategy involved in like arrangements of our caravan and things like that so are so you... probably probably can move quicker right now because we know the area won't need as many like, you won't need them scouting out, out ahead or anything well, like they'll that be scouting that's their job but they just won't be like it's not going to be super thorough we'll be moving fast right um, but as we get closer and closer towards the center of Davakar, where things get dicier, right, mm -hmm. we'll probably have to move slower, and the scouts will have to be more thorough, and, you know, there might be some teamwork that has to happen between the scouts and some of the other groups to make sure okay. we're moving. Yeah. Um, so I can roll, like, a uh, so uh, me... cunning check. Nope, nope, nope. What I'm going to have you do is I'm going to let you or one of you guys, so for the control of, like, the scouts and the hunters, I'm going to have you guys roll the dice, um, but I'll tell you off of their um, their abilities. You know what I mean? You'll be using the, their abilities to find out how uh, how successful So let me just open up the right Gage. Would we get any bonuses because of my my leadership skills? So it's gonna end up because they're moving faster, they're not doing as thorough as a search. And because the area is well known, it's gonna you know, those that negative and that positive are just gonna even out for right now. It's gonna be a, a flat roll, if you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, give me one second. Just gotta pull up the page. Look through my notes, yeah. So, if you want to give me a roll, Robert, of a vigilant. And then just let me know what you roll. Well, it'll be just roll a d20 and let a me know one. what you get. So, yep. These, no problem. These scouts, they don't catch anything. They don't report back anything bad. They kind of do a rotation of the three. There will always be three out, even if one's reporting back on their, on their time cycles to make sure that you know, yep, everything's fine. They're reporting back properly. Or uh, they're leaving, you know, you're finding their markers. So you know everything's okay um so that's good there and then your hunters are you sending them out to get food or are you guys kind of yeah i think it's always it? good okay. good policy i mean if we're moving quick enough and they can get smaller game mm -hmm. um i think it's a good policy so we don't have to dip into rations until we absolutely have to yep so uh somebody give me another d20 roll all right, I'll do that. That's a three. So they are also successful. 
Um, and they will find four of them. They did a pretty good success. They get five additional, um, almost like five additional days worth of, uh, worth of food. They, 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 they haul in a, a good couple of, they get a couple good boars and they, uh, they put them on sticks and they come back. Um, and that will kind of be day one. So you guys, each uh, hex here has is it's pretty much the equivalent of a day's worth of travel. This X up here is where it's perceived the ruins are from the maps that they have they have given you. So as you start to you know set up now camp for the at the end of the night, they start prepping all of the the boar and uh, rabbit that they were able to catch in this this easy areas. Nobody was injured during any of the travels, which is good. Um, and you pretty much had successes across the board, except for in your village, your vigilant check um, at the caravan. Um, is there anything specifically people wanted to do at night? Well, otherwise, I'm just kind of going to skip through um, and go to the next day. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Steve, did you want to... Yeah, I, I, oh, yeah. I'm going to do oh, whatever sorry, I need to do. Oh. Did, you, did you have something, Cody, as well? No, I was just saying that my guy's an old man, so he's probably tuckered out. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to attune to that uh, holy water. All right. So, Steve... There is uh, many different aspects for, for those at home for artifacts. Sometimes to bind to an artifact, you just need to, uh, you know, either spend one experience point if you have it. Um, another option is to suffer one permanent point of corruption. Um, Steve, do you have any experience points to attune to this item? I do not. So, while trying to learn about it and everything like that, you cannot crack its power. Okay. You, it, this artifact will not, because it, because of its power and what it is, it will not cause corruption to be able to learn its secrets. Right. You must expend time and effort to learn them. So you figured that out. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So, as of now, you are not attuned to it. Alrighty. We are on to the next day. Day two. Are we uh, kind of going to keep with the same, the same game plan? Yeah, I think that from my perspective, that's you know, what I explained earlier is probably going to be the, the process all the way through. Yep. Alrighty then. So if uh... yeah, and then... oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Cody. No, then I was just gonna say if if there's an opportunity for my guy to ride along in a cart at some point during the day, that he'll probably try to flip through some of his books to see if he can find anything more about the artifact. Um, I don't can we help Steve. I mean, if he uh. Well, I would use my lore master skill to help him. It's... Yeah, and I, I don't expect that I have, like, a library with me, but I imagine that I probably have, like, a couple, like... Yeah, tomes, I, would, I would think you, know? you would have journals or stuff of your, your study. Um, but right. it's the aspect that almost Steve needs to be able to expend his time, his effort. That's yeah. what that one experience point is. To be able to become acquainted with it. Yeah, no, and and I get that. My my interest in it is strictly just for the character being interested in it. Yeah, yeah, I get you. But to to Robert for your lore master, it would be he already kind of figured out that 
you know, he just has to, he just has to spend that, you know, the experience is kind of like that effort into something, right? So that's how your abilities increase. You exp expend the experience to, as a figure to say, this is what my character has done to do this. And for this artifact, that's what somebody might do. If anybody else in the party has experience, they could possibly buy into it. And if it's bound to one person, it doesn't mean it can't be bound to another. And then just to clarify, because of the nature of the artifact, you said that it it cannot go the other route of providing corruption because of the nature of it. Correct. Okay. Yep, because of the nature of this artifact specifically, um, it you can't take the the uh point of um the point corruption. Of, cor of of corruption the point of permanent corruption to uh to a tune of it to it so you well, said that the if at any point if at any point Roscoe becomes aware of that he will scoff about that <laughs> gotcha um you did indicate you said that the attunement could go to multiple people. Um, like it could it could hold one person at a time. Oh. But like just because, you know, if one of you guys attune to it and spend one experience point, it doesn't mean that Steve, if you wanted to pass it on to Steve, Steve's character, he wouldn't be able to attune to it because it already you know what I mean? It just means you would if you wanted to attune to it again another time, you would have to spend another point of experience. Yep. That makes sense. So, um, if that's that, we're into the next day. I'll need another, you know, leadership slash tactician rule from you, Robert. Okay. A, ooh, 15 out of 15 so <laughs> you uh you start you boss some people around um this time you're a little, a little too bossy. yeah you're a little too bossy and a couple of people are like Ugh, come on stop being such a goblin you know <laughs> um but they still listen and you keep the group moving and everything like that steve are you still doing a uh, vigilant checks uh yes i rolled an eight out of ten for vigilant this time you're you're on the ball you're not your mind's not wandering you're really keeping an eye out everywhere nice um cody are you doing another uh herbal you know search yes i would like to do another alchemy uh, it's a cunning rule. Are you looking? What are you specifically maybe looking for herb wise? Are you specifically trying to create um, certain things? Or are you just looking for whatever you kind of find? Really, just whatever I kind of find. Um, the things that I do like, I like the elemental elixirs, those are pretty cool. Okay. Give me a roll. That's a failure. I got a 16 out of 14. For whatever reason, this time when you're wandering through with the caravan, you just, you're not seeing anything. Either this area is picked through by other locals or, you know, maybe it's not a good growing season in this spot on your travels. Okay. All right. And then your scouts are still doing the same level of checking, right? It's not. They're not slowing down in pace. They're still moving fast and everything like that, correct? Correct. Okay, so give me the same rule as last time. Two. Yeah, they're still... Everything's hunky-dory. And then your hunters. You can give me a roll for that, whoever. I'll do that. Uh, 17. They do not find 
anything. It is scarce out in the woods. One because they got it all yesterday. <laughs> yeah, one thinks they see something, but then it ends up being a weird moving flower in the distance that they shot at. <laughs> Mimics it mimicked the same movements as a pheasant. Um, I wouldn't admit that. Something flies in front of your face. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was very scary. <laughs> I would be terrified of that. Yeah, yeah. it's got petals like <laughs> and salmon like. Yeah. Look at, <laughs> Look at the pollen. Look at the pollen. Um. So that's day two. Everything kind of settles in. Cody, you do a little bit of reading as as you go. Um. That's kind of what distracted you from your your alchemical ventures um and you just your character would know that um you and actually you had actually looked into this very um very in depth after what happened to your brother because you almost felt like this could have been an aspect if you could harness it in the right way and a person could survive the negative aspects you may be able to reverse somebody who became an abomination but right That's all of your what, research that was kind of what was running yeah. in my head all of your research just kept hitting the aspect that it's most likely going to kill them before it destroys the corruption right um but it's still intrusive okay. to this day yeah all right all right day number three don't you worry. Um, but if we can get another set of rolls. Yeah, once Cody gets back, should we wait for him? I mean, we can we can get your okay. guys' rolls in, right? Let's let's do it. Rolls. Oh hell yeah, that's a natty one. Okay. Noise. Uh, three for my leadership this time, so nice. a little better. <laughs> I took, I got the hit. All right, I'll be nicer. <laughs> there you go. And then, uh, if you can also do the scout roll for me, Robert. Yeah. Ten out of what? I don't know what the target is. So you got a ten. Yeah. Because yep. it's based on their vigilant, right? Everything's yep. Everything's going well. Cool. And then Steve. For um, the I hunters. Will... Yeah. No, for the hunters. Oh, hunters, yes. Uh, um, another one. <laughs> mm. A feast or famine. Yeah. <laughs> um. Again, they come back with five days Jeez. of rations. Hell so in yeah. three three days, we've gotten ten. <laughs> Ten days worth of food. You're welcome. So it's it's going pretty well. Cody, I see. For how many people? Oh. For like thirty people, too. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. a lot of food. Yeah, it's they they are finding abundant aspects of like boar, and everywhere they're tearing, there's rabbit. The forest provided. Yes. Every step Ooh. they take, they're, they're stepping on a rabbit in and, and, <laughs> and just the right way where it doesn't harm the meat. Yeah. Somehow. Then, uh, Cody, are you doing more alchemy uh, checks? Yeah, I'll do another alchemy check. Okay. Uh, that's a success with a two. Oh, so a, a nice. pretty good success. Yeah. So you end up finding two um two of the materials for an elemental elixir. So you still have to craft that, but you have the materials for it. Okay. And then you find yep. an additional two things of uh medical herbs. It's for medicinal purposes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm the doctor, so it is. I have a license. <laughs> so you guys have you know fast traveled through three days. 
It, everybody's in really good spirits. A lot of people are like, <clears throat> what is everybody so worried about? We've spent three days now without it. An, an aspect of even the forest being rough to us. Um, some of the barbarians of the group kind of like scoff at the arm. Uh, the um, I scoff. Yeah. Take my my skills for granted. They yeah. kind of they got here without my guidance. Exactly. They kind of <laughs> scoff at some of the uh, the people who are hired. You think, oh, okay, like anybody could become an adventurer. Look at how easy this is, type of thing. Yeah. Um and Noobs. and things have been going very well for you guys. On the fourth day, you end up, um, you know, on this day you're gonna have to cross the river. Um, you have a good path already picked out where it, it usually is shallow enough that everybody can get across. Um, especially with the pack animals, everything will be fine. So for this day, um, it may be beneficial for maybe steve to do a strong to help people get across your leadership will still be helpful here robert and then uh um there's not going to be much medicinal searching um for your alchemy in this area you know this cody it's kind of a little bit more of a drier spot so if there's something else you want to do there you can figure that out as well make them potions oh man all right mm. cool. 14 out of 15 for the strong. Okay, just succeed. For the leadership, ooh, it's a bad day. 18 out of 15. <laughs> you want to talk? You don't want my leadership skills? You think it's easy <laughs> navigating this forest? <laughs> um, Cody, what were you going to be uh, conducting? Um, well, I have, I have some, I have, like, you gave me three healing herbs and then, like, two, uh, herbal remedy ingredients, mm -hmm. and then also two materials for elemental elixir, yep. and then an antidote herb. Mm -hmm. So out of all those things, like, do I have some time to make a couple, um, elixirs um probably because there's gonna be you're not really doing a forced march there's gonna be aspects of downtime in this in this avenue you could probably uh try and knock a couple of those out so that's that's what we can say okay. you're doing um there's gonna be really no role for those we'll, we'll count it as you know okay. you're just spending your time doing it and with that you just can't do anything else okay and then you still have your scouts and your hunters that need rules. And then what was the uh, fruits of my labor? You so it's it's pr relatively the way um, we're just gonna work it out this time is each thing will kind of be material wise is one to one, so you'll get two okay. elemental things, you know. Whatever I've given you so far. Uh, Hunter's got a two. Scout's got a seven. So still succeeding. All right. So as much as everything, when you you're getting people to, you know, you're trying to tell them, hey, don't go out too far. Try and do single file across the river. You know, we don't want to spread everybody out. We don't want everybody going across all at the same time. Because then if, you know, God forbid, supplies slip off, things like that, um, there won't be. Listen. And, and nobody's, you're just not communicate either not communicating well people aren't listening you know they think they know better about this and uh we lose bessie high high or low <laughs> low we lost more than bessie <laughs> we you end up bessie and the farm man. so so um one of the one of the people coming across uh -huh. um it's going to be the worker's we name lost the wagon and cash's toolbox yeah. <laughs> the worker who's going to be uh with this this uh one of the mules is Siphon. he's an ambrian uh male 
Um, he's usually very hardworking, very dedicated, but today he, he doesn't listen to you. He goes out a little bit too far, um, and it goes into kind of one of the, the deeper ends. And one of the packs of rations that his mule is carrying kind of all falls into the river. So you lose eight days of rations that uh, this guy that uh, this guy had. Uh, okay. Well, that sucks. Eight days um, of rations is a lot of rations. <laughs> what? One of your hunters who was further down the river ends up coming back with the pack. That's the, actually what they hunted for the day um, of rations. <laughs> and a couple Ooh. other people um, had, you know, some some uh, some rabbits. So you end up gaining two days worth of rations. Oh, all right. Then what about Seven? Does he get punished for his arrogance? <laughs> I'm just joking. If you guys want to punish him, it's you know. I'm just joking. It's up to you. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> just listen. Nice. So, um, do you guys get across this river? It's starting to get dusk out. Burned at the stake. You, it's starting to be a dusk out. <laughs> People um, from from the leadership just breaking down, either from you know you not communicating well, Robert, or the people he just angered not listening. Toyota Prius. Uh, yeah, he angered Toyota Prius. Um, Apparently, I said some blasphemies, and that just sent everybody over the edge. Everybody's everybody's very tired. Um, the, the going across the river took a lot of out of people. Um, luckily your hunters were able to pick up some of the food. So everything, you're still in the plus there. No, no real worries. Um, and you come in and you set up for camp. Sadly, in the middle of the night, as everybody's sleeping, you hear a shriek. And people go, oh no! Earheads, everybody watch out! Did you say earheads? Earheads. Eater. Ear? Eater. 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 <laughs> 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 um, and e all of you would know, eaterheads are spiders. That. Ooh. Um, once they kill something, they, uh, plant eggs inside of the carcass and, um, they know it's very gruesome because then the eggs hatch and pretty much just eat their way out of the carcass for food. Circle of life. Um. Circle. <laughs> and they are very, you know, it's not Circle rare to run into life. them. Um, so, you're... Whole group is under attack, and now -na -na. Attack, act. attack, act, act. Yeah. So you sadly. Well, that's a lot of webs. Set up camp. These in these dishes didn't listen. In yeah, their really. uh, in a spider den, great. In in a yeah, in a spider. Was that den. a white dragon? <laughs> Where's that <laughs> Don't worry about those. Don't I'm gonna worry. About it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, he was like, "Don't you worry about that white dragon. That's for later." <laughs> um, for right now, I'm gonna use your old character co tokens because I did not have new ones. Wow, um, good job. All right, fine. Get that, then you know <laughs> you're just gonna be blank oh. colors. Robert, you are blue. Cody, you're okay. purple. And um, Steve, yeah, that's your name. You're green. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's your name. Wait, can I be the Burger King? <laughs> no, you cannot be the Burger King. <laughs> so, Steve could be Big Bird. Yeah, in, he's so big. In this, in this encounter, as we talked earlier. Um, the more fighters you pull away from the caravan to fight with you, 
the more likely you will have losses or damaging out the caravan. Where so from the scouts, did we get? There's obviously some warning. Do we have any idea? You did how not many? get any warning. Why not? They, they rolled good. They did, but it wasn't the aspect of during your travels that you got attacked. It was your aspect of the leadership failure to get across this water. Uh, blame it on me, that, huh? <laughs> that, uh, you were you got under attack. Wow. Because you found a bad spot to set up camp. Wow, Neil. Wow. That's, that's how it goes. So, how do you guys want to pull a couple of fighters? What do you What do you want to know? There's a decent amount of spiders, um, as you can see. That's that's the best I can give you. Uh, why don't we pull? One? Will we be Will we be able to assess the uh, the danger of the situation and be able to have more information on how many fighters? would be smart to have in addition to us. That's what I wanted to know, Steve, but Neil said, no, we're being ambushed. You have no idea. Okay, that's fair. Um, Do you know that these groups, they travel and you know, especially if you're in a den. Yeah, beast lore, Steve. Use your beast lore. I don't don't have beast lore. (laughs) (laughs) There can be, you know, upwards to, and of course this is attacking your whole your whole caravan, there could be upwards of 20 spiders. Oh. Why don't we bring one of the Templars? Because I don't want to bring some of the squishy guys if uh, we don't need them. Leave the squishies back at camp. We could bring a couple of... Yeah, uh, yeah we could bring one Templar. Yeah, we'll bring a Templar, yeah, okay. we'll bring a Templar and, and maybe like two of the fighters. Oh, why don't we bring like maybe the rangers, like two of the like hunters or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boat oriented, and then the templar can protect the bow guys, type of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Alrighty, so you're gonna take, um, one templar is what you're taking, right? Yep, one templar, and I believe two rangers. So you are going to take Amina. She means it. And then you said two of the hunters? Yes. Hunters, rangers, whoever has really good range skills. Better than Vim. Don't, don't give us Vim. Vim is going to be one of them. No! <laughs> Garant. These aren't actually the right names. Um, so the two hunters are going to be the green colors. And then... I mean, it could be... It could be... It could be them. No, it's not. <laughs> um, Because... Yeah. Because they all died horribly in a fire. <laughs> Except for Pendleton, he was the only survivor. Elada is one of the hunters, and um, Prefrian is one of the other ones. And then you have Aminia, who is a Templar. Can you put them together, Neil? There you go. Thank you. Yep, not a problem. And then, uh, you will be fighting. I'm actually going to make new circles here. 20 shoe lobs. <laughs> oh, no, not yet. Back. That is one. Two, three, four, five. Sorry, I kind of have to get you guys. Oh, into, you want to surround us? Yeah, that's into, what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Proper ambushing aspects. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> He 
These spiders don't know who they're messing with. I'll tell you that right now. Why would they mess with me? I'm so big and strong. Hey, where'd the big one come from? <laughs> Feels like TPK. Let's do this. <laughs> so as you see, you know, you form your group and you're like, on us. We will attack them head on. You will. Ooh, sorry. The notice was right in front of my face. Um, so as, as these spiders come in, you will notice five of them smaller dropping right in front of you. As then you start to hear this loud, just like, you know, arachnid clicking noise of the, their, uh, mandibles kind of like scraping up against itself as you turn around and you see one that almost looks like the mama. Oh, I'm going right behind you. <laughs> and for now, this is where we'll pause for this episode. It has been right before we'll get into combat. We'll leave everybody on a seat. Gives you a little bit of aspect of travel in Davakar. Mm-hmm. Um, as you now will realize, it is a very dangerous land in the world of the forest but yeah ain't no danger we the danger <laughs> we <laughs> the danger <laughs> um but yeah as as you of course you know you guys are getting into combat you still see your screams and fighting of the everybody in the caravan trying to fight off the rest of them Will it be the right move that you pulled a Templar and two fighters away from the pack? Or will yes. it be the right move for the spiders to kill? No, no we made the right move. All right, we'll see. <laughs> Links again for everybody coming in to see this next episode. We will have an action-packed episode three as we move in, as now we will experience combat for the first time. Episode three. Episode three. The spidering. Revenge of the spiders. (laughs) The spidering. The spidering. (laughs) And we learned, you know, how artifacts kind of work, which is pretty Mm -hmm. cool. That's the importance of experience. Yeah, exactly. Um, Not just to spend it all on abilities, but sometimes it's good to hold on to a little bit. Yeah, we got to use some of our abilities. Yeah, you got to see what each ability does. You know, the alchemy ability is very helpful out in in the world. Yep. Robert's leadership did well all the way up until the final act. Until it didn't. Until <laughs> so we really uh, needed it. Yeah. <laughs> till till the whole group got on Ghoulie and thought, "Oh, Devacar, this is this isn't a bad place. Let's just sleep where the spiders are." I don't see any of that. <laughs> 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 it's just a bunch of web. Spiders are cared. Yeah. Oh, it's a blanket. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna look how cozy it is. It hugs right to me. <laughs> well, yeah, it was. it's like a sleeping bag made just for me. <laughs> and I've lost I mean, a lot of weight. It's also yeah. coming from my insides into fluid and sucking it out of me. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's always a good time in the world. My little pony, except for my little spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta now tame this big spider and ride it into into Davacar. <laughs> the whole time I was thinking like Faden when he's like, take it down, take it down. <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> Alrighty, folks, we're going to pack it up for this one. Catch us next time as we adventure further into the Dark Forest. Or we don't, because they, everybody dies to spiders. Yeah, or we all die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could get board wiped by spiders. <laughs> Spider <sure>. board wipe! <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, boy. Alrighty, folks, see you next time. And as always, keep adventuring. Indeed. Mm-hmm. And get rich. Thank <laughs> you.